الكريم الرحمن القوي المتين والصلاة والسلام على الصادق الأمين سيد ولد آدم أجمعين وعلى آله أصحابه الطيبين وعلى أتباعه وأنصاره المستمسكين بهديه إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فيا أيها الإخوة والأخوات جملكم الله بالتوحيد والسنة والمهات ألتقي معكم في هذا اليوم لأتكلم عن موضوع عنوانه الأحكام الخاصة بالمولود من الزنا والأحكام المتعلقة بهذا الموضوع كثيرة ومتعددة ولهذا سأعرض لبعضها في درس هذا اليوم والبعض الآخر أتنا يلهو في لقاءات قادمة بإذن الله تعالى وأسأل الله جل وعلا أن ينفعني وإياكم بما ستسمعون إنه سميع الدعاء وسوف يكون الكلام معكم عن هذا الموضوع في عدة وقفات حتى يسهل فهمه وحفظه وضبط مسائله وأحكامه نعم الشيخ حفظ الله بيجان أسأل all the praises for Allah الكريم الرحمن the most noble and الرحمن the most merciful and may prayers and peace be upon the most truthful of the creation and the Sayyid al-Bashir who is the leader of all of humankind Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam likewise his noble family members and his pure companions and all those who follow upon their way until death meets them. My brothers and sisters in Islam, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beautify you with Tawheed and the Sunnah. I am meeting with you today to speak to you concerning a topic. And that topic is the rulings which are specific to the child born from Zina. And the rulings connected to this matter, there are many, and there are numerous. And due to this, this lesson, it will be the first in a series of lessons, which the Shaykh, he says that he will deliver them in our meetings that are to come, uh, and the next uh, upcoming lessons that he has with us, by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit me and you, by way of that which we hear. So, the Shaykh, he says, that the speech, or and indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the one who hears and answers the supplication. The Shaykh, he said that the speech regarding this shall be in a number of points. And these points are in order to make it easy for individuals to understand and to memorize and to comprehend so that uh, it will make learning this affair easy. فضل شيخنا مشهورا مجورا فأقول مستعينا بالله جل وعلا الوقفة الأولى وهي عن تعريف الزنا الزنا هو وقع الرجل امرأة في قبولها من غير عقد نكاح ولا ملك يمين ولا شبع نعم. The first point, and I say this 
seeking the help of Allah, that the first point is regarding the definition of zina. The definition of zina is the man having intercourse with a woman and uh, right, uh, having intercourse with this woman without having an actual marriage contract and without that woman being one of his right hand possessions. Namah Sheikh.
ذلك لينزجر الناس عن هذا المحرم ويحذروا منه غاية الحذر وإن كان لم يتزوجا بعد وزنيا فإنهما يجلدان مئة جلدة على مرأة من الناس ونظر حتى يرتجع حتى يرتجعوا ويغلب عن بلدهما وعن أهلهما سنة كاملة The Sheikh Abdullah Allah he says that from that which illustrates the greatness of the prohibition of this matter and the severity of its ugliness and the intensity of its crime are a number of matters. The first matter which illustrates this is that Allah has made the punishment for the one who commits this act of fornication severe. And it is that the individual, whether a man or a woman who is married and commits this act of fornication, then the punishment for this is that they are to be stoned. They are to be hit with rocks until they die. And they are to, this, this is to be done in front of the people in order that it may act as a deterrent and may make the people beware of this tremendous act. And if the man or the woman is not married and they commit this act of fornication, then they are to be beaten, they are to be lashed, and they are to be exiled from the land for an entire year. And this is to take place in front of the people. So that they may be aware of this heinous act. Follow Shukran. Al-Amr al-Thani Anna Allah Anna Fushuwa Al-Zina Wa-Intisharihi Min-Asbabi Huzuri Al-Habi Bi-Ahri Al-Arab Fakad Qala رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما ظهر في قوم الزنا أو الربا إلا أحل بأنفسهم عذاب الله والحديث قد صحاه الحاكم وحسنه The second matter is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he causes punishment to descend upon the people of the earth as a result of the spread of fornication amongst them. It has been authentic, it has been narrated from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that he said that there has not appeared amongst people fornication and riba except that they made the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala halal upon themselves. And if I did, it was authenticated by Al-Hakam and Great Al-Hassan by Al-Albani, alayhim, alayhim al-Rahmatullah. Follow Shaykhana. Al-Amr al-Thalif, anna Allah, anna Allah jalla wa ala, qad qa'ala, أهل الزنا بالعذاب الشديد في النار فقال جل وعلا في آخر سورة الفرقان والذين لا يدعون مع الله إلى آخر ولا يقتلون النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق ولا يجنون ومن يفعل ذلك يلقى ثانا 
يضاعف له العذاب يوم القيامة ويخرج فيه معانا إلا من تاب وآمن وعمل صالحا فأولئك يبدل الله سيئاتهم حسنات وكان الله غفورا رحيما و أخرج البخاري في صحيحه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أتاه آتيان فانطلق به حتى أتى إلى مثل التنور والتنور هو الفون الذي تكون فيه النار فيطبخ الناس فيه خبزهم ولحومهم وأطعمتهم فانطلق به حتى أتى إلى مثل على مثل التنور فإذا فيه لغط وأصوات فاطلع فيه فإذا فيه رجال ونساء ونساء عراه وإذا بالله بي وإذا بالله بالنار يأتيهم من أسفل منهم فإذا أتاهم هذا اللاب وإنهم ما يعقلوا يصرخون فسأل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من هؤلاء فقيل له أن الرجال والنساء العراء الذين في مثل بناء التنور فإنهم الزناة والزواني نعم أعوذ بالله الشيخ فضح الله he said that the third matter is that Allah he threatened the people who commit zina with a severe punishment in the hellfire has come at the end of Surah Al-Furqan that Allah Azza wa Jalla said those who do not associate any other ilah along with Allah nor do they kill a soul which is muharram for them and they do not commit zina and those who do this uh, they have committed a tremendous sin and shall have a grievous punishment on the day of judgment except for those who repent and do righteous good deeds. For indeed Allah Ta'ala, He will accept their repentance, and indeed Allah, He is forgiving and merciful. And that has come in the Sahih of Imam al-Bukhari. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, two individuals came to him, and they took him to something which is like a tanur. And the tanur, the Shaykh, he says, it is like an oven in which an individual, he puts his bread and meat and different types of food and they cook inside of this oven. So the Messenger of Allah Sallam, these two individuals, they came with him and they told him to look inside of this uh, thing which is like a tannur, which is like this oven. And when he looked inside of it, he saw naked men and naked women. And they were being turned around inside of this oven. And a, fly, a fire was coming to them from underneath them, burning them. And at the end of this experience, the Messenger of Allah Sallam, he said, who were they? And uh, from this narration, the two individuals, they were angels. They told the Messenger of Allah Sallam that as for the naked men and naked women which you saw inside of the Tenor, of that oven, then they were the fornicators and the fornicatresses. 
Wat is zeggen? En
وفي الآخرة ويأتي يوم القيامة بسيئات كبيرة وآثام عديدة بسبب هذا المنكر وهذه الفاحشة ويجمع إلى ذلك يسير إلى الإسلام ويشوه صورته عند غير المسلمين لأن المسلمين يمارسون ما حرمه الله عليهم ويتعدون حدود ربهم ولا يبالون بأحكام دينهم فالله الله يا من ظلمت نفسك بهذه الجريمة وأسأت إلى دينك دين الإسلام دين الفضيلة والطهر والعفة والشرف اتق الله قبل أن تلقى الله قبل أن يذكى الموت فلا تجد لعل الله جل وعلا يأخذ نفسك وأنت على هذه المعصية وأنت لم تتب منها بل قد يأتيك أولاد من غير من هذا الزنا فتتحمل وزرا أكثر بسبب ذلك نعم Shaykh of Allah, he says that after that which you have heard from verses and ahadith which illustrate and show the despicable nature of zina and the greatness of its crime and that it is from the major sins and from the most dangerous of affairs, then something which is extremely saddening, it is extremely sad, is that you see Muslims who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored by giving them out of slab and has honored them over the rest of the people. You see some of them, they go to the non-Muslim lands and they begin to mix with women. And next thing you know, they begin to commit this great crime and this great sin as a result of them mixing with the women there. And perhaps some of them may even live in the same house with a woman, committing this terrible and despicable act with her over and over and over again. The Shaykh, he says that, and so the individual, he comes, uh, uh, he commits this act, this great munkar, and this despicable act of zina, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes the punishment to come to him in the dunya, as well as on the day of judgment, he comes forth on the day of judgment, having great sins with him, and having uh, great crimes along with them due to the commission of this despicable act. And not only this, the individual he displays to the non-Muslims who look at the Muslims that this is what the Muslims are about. The Muslims, they commit illegal sexual intercourse with people who are not permissible for them. And they do not care about the ahkam, uh, the legislation of Al-Islam and the rulings of, the, of, the, of their deen. So the Shaykh, he says, rather, he says, oh Muslims, have respect and, 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 gain, and, and have a sense of honor for the religion that Allah Ta'ala has given you, and for the chastity, and for the nobility that is in the deen of Al-Islam. And have taqwa of Allah before death comes to you. And Allah Subh'ana wa Ta'ala takes your soul while you are upon this ma'asi, you are upon this act of disobedience, and having not repented to Allah Subh'ana wa Ta'ala. And before you begin having children from this, from this despicable act, and that which comes along with it. Now, Mr. Sheikh. The last one is the third one, and it is on the number of the children who do not belong to these people, or to the people who are known, or to the people who are known. The third point is regarding the types of children which are not ascribed to any specific father 
or they are not prescribed or not ascribed to any specific family, nor are they ascribed to any specific tribe. No, I'm sure. الأولاد الذين لا ينسبون إلى آباء معروفين هم أولاد ثلاثة الولد الأول ولد اللعان اللعان شيخ وهو نعم الولد الأول ولد اللعان وهو الولد الذي وهو الولد الذي نفى الزوج نسبه منه بعد ملاعنته من زوجته فإذا وجد رجل متزوج امرأة فأنجبت طفلا فاتهمها زوجها به وقال إن هذا الابن ليس بناتج من جماع لا بل هو من جماع ووطي غيره فإن الحاكم الشرعي يلاعن بينهما والملاعنة قد ذكرها الله جل وعلا في أول سورة النور فإذا وقعت هذه الملاعنة يحكم الحاكم بعدها بعدم نسبة هذا الابن إلى هذا الزوج وينسب بعد ذلك إلى أمه الذي التي أنجبت نعم واضح؟ نعم واضح يا شيخ تفضل الشيخ حفظه الله he says that the children who are not to be ascribed to uh, a, a known or particular father are of three categories. The first of them is the walad al-li'an, or the child of li'an. And the shaykh, says that the child of li'an is the child who, uh, in a case where the husband, he, after, uh, no, where the husband, he, uh, there's a, a mutual curse that goes on. He accuses his wife of, of fornicating, on, uh, and she has a child after that. So the husband, he accuses of that child of not being his, and he says that, now the man, he says, for example, that this child is not from my intercourse with my wife, rather it is from her intercourse with someone else. He says that this case it is to be, be taken to the hakim, it's to be taken to the Islamic judge or the ruler, and in, 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 in which case, the ruler, he has them do a mutual curse between each other. Right? They do the mutual curse, invoking the curse of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the individual who's lying in his case. The husband either lying by accusing her, or she's saying that he's lying by accusing her, in which case, they do this mutual curse between themselves, and this mutual curse, it is mentioned at the beginning of Surah Nur. He says that in this particular case, what the Hakim does is that he gives the ruling that this child is not to be ascribed to the father. The child, in this case, is not to be ascribed to the father. Rather, that child is to be ascribed to the mother who has been accused in this particular case. Follow Shekhanah. Al-Thani, walad al-Zina, wa al-walad al تأتي به أمه من الزنا ويكون معروفا عند الناس أنه تولد بسبب الزنا وهو موضوع درسنا لهذه الليلة وسيأتي تفصيل الأحكام 
المتعلقة به إن شاء الله تعالى نعم And the second category is the child of Zina It is the child who the mother brings forth as a result of an act of fornication And it is known amongst the people that the mother she only got this child by way of fornication And this is the subject matter of our lesson today And there shall come by the permission of Allah rulings which are specific to this particular child Naam Sheikh الثالث اللقيق وهو المولود الذي طرحه من الذي طرحه أهله في الطريق أو أمام مسجد أو ملجأ خوفا من الفقر أو من أو من أن تتعن به المرأة أو خشية أن تغضح بين الناس ولا تتزوج إذا كانت غير ذات زوج وهذا الولد لا ينسب إلى أم أو أب ذوي عائلة ونسب معروف وإنما يسمى باسم لا يرجع إلى عائلة أو قبيلة وعشيرة معروفة ويسمى مثلا عبد الله ابن عبد الرحمن أو عبد الرزاق ابن محمد أو عبد الرزاق ابن عبد الواحد ونحو ذلك نعم واضح واضح The third is اللقيق and this is the child who is left somewhere in a pathway or someone his mother takes him and drops him in front of the masjid and leaves him there or the family abandoned him in some particular place the shaykh he says they do so out of fear of poverty or out of fear the woman she may fear that no one will marry her if they know that she has a child so she drops this child and gives this child away and just dumps the child somewhere the shaykh he says that this particular child is not to be ascribed to a mother or a father. It's not to be ascribed to a mother or a father. And the name of that child does not go back to a particular family or a particular tribe or a particular people. So the child is to be named, for example, Abdullah ibn Abdurrahman. You name it with something general like this, or Abdul Razak. Ibn Abdul Wahid. Something like this, which is general, uh, this is how you name this particular uh, child. Naam al-Sheikh. Al-Waqfatu al-Wabi'ah wa hiya al al ahkam al-Khasa bi al-Mawrud min al-Zina wa al ahkam المتعلقة بالمولود من الزنا كثيرة ولعلي أذكر منها في هذا الدرس حكما واحدا أو حكمين وأكمل ما تبقى في دروس قادمة The fourth point which the Sheikh is going to mention are the rulings which are specific to the child of Zina. And the rulings connected to the child of Zina, there are many. And perhaps 
in this lesson, we're going to mention one ruling or two rulings and complete the rest of them in the lessons that are to come. Now, Mr. Sheikh. الحكم الأول وهو عن نسب ولد الزنا إلى من يكون إذا زنى رجل بامرأة فأنجبت عن طريق نائه مولودا ذكرا كان أو أنثى فإن هذا الابن أو هذه البنت لا تعتبر ابنة شرعية لهذا الزاني ولا يعتبر أبا لها وإلى هذا ذهب عامة أهل العلم ومنهم الأئمة الأربعة أبو حنيفة ومالك والشافعي وأحمد وابن حزم الظاهري وأصحابه وعليه فإن هذا الزاني ليس له على هذا الولد الذي ولد بسبب مائه ليس له حق الأبوة لا في البر ولا في النفقة ولا في المحرمية إذا كانت بنت ولا ليس هذا الولد أو هذه البنت هذا الزاني إذا مات ولا يرثهم هو إذا ماتوا نعم Sheikh of the Allah said that the first ruling is as it relates to the ascription of this child. Who should it be ascribed to? He says that if the man fornicates with a woman and they bear a child, whether a boy or a girl, do that fornication, then this son or this daughter is not considered to be a child of that father. Rather, that child, uh, a child of that fornicating father. Rather, that child is to be ascribed to her, to the woman. And this is the view of the majority of the scholars. From them, the four Imams, Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Al Shafi'i, and Imam Ahmad, and likewise Ibn Hazm, Al Dahiri, and his companions. And upon this, we see the state of the Zani is such that he does not, or the, the right of the fornicating father of that child, does not have, as it relates to that child, any fatherly rights. And as it relates to bir and, you know, goodness that we're supposed to have for our parents, he doesn't have that right from that child. And as it relates to nafiqa and spending, and as it relates to the, uh, him, the father, being a mahram for that child, if that child is a girl. And if he dies then the child cannot inherit from him, and if the child dies, he cannot inherit from that child. Brother Shekhar.
قول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الصحيح الولد للفراش وللعاهر الحجر الولد للفراش وللعاهر الحجر فدل هذا الحديث على أن الولد إذا أنجبته المرأة إنما ينسب لصاحب الفراش الذي هي في عصمته وهو الزوج أما العاهر الذي زنى بها فليس له إلا الحجر فدل على أن هذا الإذن لا ينسب إلى هذا الزاني نعم And what proves that is the authentic statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said الولد للفراش that the child belongs to the bed and the fornicator gets the stone and this hadith it proves that the child belongs to sahib al-firash it belongs to the person who owns that bed and uh, in which case is the woman is considered to be the woman and the fornicator gets, has nothing coming except for the stone and what we see from this that the child born from this type of relation it is not to be ascribed to the father father shakana فينسبوا هذا الولد إلى أمه التي أنجبت من الزنا و تعتبر أما له ولها عليه حق الأمومة من البر والنبقة والتحريم وسائر أحكام الأمهات وإلى هذا ذهب عامة آل العلم بل قد حكى غير بل قد حكى ابن حزم الله رحمه الله اتفاق العلماء على ذلك نعم and this child is to be ascribed to the mother who actually bore this child from Zina and the child and the mother is considered to be the mother of that child and she has all of the rights of motherhood for that child from bitter meaning the child has to be righteous and good to his mother and from spending and from respect and all of the rest of the rulings which are specific to the mother and upon this view are the majority of the scholars and Ibn Hajar Ibn Hazm he reported uh, a consensus of the scholars upon this matter no I'm sure well ابن الزنا أن الإبن أن ابن الزنا لا ينسب ينسب إلى أمه الحديث الصحيح في قصة المتلاعنين التي وقعت في زمن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم حيث حيث فرق النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بين المرأة وزوجها بعد اللعان ونفى الابن ونفى الولد ونفى الابن عن أبيه ونسبه وألحقه بأمه فأصبح بين الناس يدعى 
إلى أمه وأنه دعاء ولا يدعى إلى زوجها ولعل ولعل يقف عند هذا الحد لأن الوقت قارب على الانتهاء وعشاؤنا قد أصبح على سفرة الطعام وسبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك نشكركم شيخنا على هذه الكلمة الطيبة ونسأل الله أن يجعلها في مثال هاتناتكم يوم القيامة آمين آمين رحم الله من حياكم الله السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام عليكم The Shaykh Hafidah Allah, he said that, and what proves that this child of Zina, it is to be ascribed to the mother, is the authentic hadith which has come as it relates to the story that happened and took place during the time of the Prophet wasallam, When the Prophet wasallam separated a woman and her husband, after the liyan, after this mutual cursing that we mentioned earlier, he separated the woman and her husband by way of this liyan, or after this liyan, and he negated that child being ascribed to his father, and gave the mother all rights over that particular child. And that child was known amongst the people by its mother and not known uh, by her husband or her ex-husband, uh, who she had done this liyan, mutual curse with and the shaykh he says that he's going to stop at this point because the time has become quite late there and uh, I think he mentions that some food was being prepared or being brought to him or something like this and he closed on this note uh, that was sallallahu ala rabbiyana muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in